people who made a marriage pact with someone like, if we're both single by the time we're 40, let's get married, and went through with it. How did it go? Story 1. Best friend since we were really young. Always had crushes on each other, off and on. In high school, our timing was awful, and we never ended up dating, but we did make a marriage pact. If we were both single at 30 years old, we'd get married. Some years passed. We moved away from each other, grew distant, dated other people. Long story short, we're now back in each other's lives, and I'm reasonably sure we're going to make good on the pact earlier than originally anticipated. Story 2. I had an uncle who did this with a girl for when they turned 35. They turned 35 and laughed it off but ended up dating instead. A few years later, they got married. I think most who do it are already interested in the other. They just don't want to admit it yet. Edit. Since this got a ton of response, I asked my uncle's wife for the full story. They were both amused, and my uncle also texted the family group chat to brag they were Reddit famous, which led to many middle-aged people confused about what Reddit was. Anyways, they made the deal in college. They barely kept in touch after college, however. She moved back to the city and met back up through old friends. That's when they began to get closer and joke about the whole 35 thing once more. For his birthday, instead of having party, he just invited her out for dinner, which led her to joke, Oh, are you going to propose? And they laughed. But during dinner, they started discussing what it would look like if they started dating. Within the month, they began. Story 3. My wife said she made this pact with a guy who took it seriously, I guess. We went to high school together, so I know of him, and he randomly calls ten years later and asked my wife if she is still with me. She said yes, and he to the sky up and we haven't heard since lol. That I know of anyway, always that one percent chance of something. Story 4. I made a baby pact with a friend. I, if I hit a certain age that I now can't remember, he would impregnate me. I knew we wouldn't be good together romantically, but he was a solid best friend and would have been a great dad. It was also a safety net for me that helped me leave an abusive relationship. I had been convinced that no one else would ever love me, and I'd never be a mum. Anyway, he ended up introducing me to my now husband, who I have a child with, while he is married to someone far better suited to his personality than me. So I'd say it worked out for the best for everyone. Story 5. My best friend growing up and I made this pact. We were 13, 14 at the time. The pact was if we didn't marry anyone by 30, we would marry each other. A few years later, we moved it to 25. By the time we were 19, 20, we started dating. We got married at 22, just celebrated our third anniversary. Edit. Holy, I had push notifications turned off. Had zero idea this post was doing so well. Just to add to my little story, we actually have known each other since we were at least four. There's video and pictures of us at her fifth birthday party at Putt-Putt. Story six. In my early 20s, I would hook up with this chick here and there. We were actually pretty good friends, but we never really to the sky out outside of social groups, which is a shame. She was fun as hell, and we always kind of found ourselves in the corner ignoring the group. Anyways, we made a pact that if we weren't in a relationship by 30, we would get married. Turns out she got back with her ex. It's been 10 years, and she reminded me of our marriage pact. I had completely forgotten. We're both married now to other people. We still talk here and there. And sometimes she tells me that she thinks we would have made a great couple, so I worry that she's not too happy where she is. I haven't seen her in person in years. Edit. I guess I should add to the... I worry she's not happy where she is statement. We're both 35. She's married, two kids, stay-at-home mom. Great husband, he just works about 80 hours a week. I am married, no kids. Wife is full-time student, I work full-time. We have the ability to up and move and do whatever, short of grad school. We travel when we can, which is pretty frequently. We just up and move to another state for my wife to start her grad school program. Grass is greener, you know, I mean, for both of us. I have wondered where my life would be if I was to get married and have kids when I was younger. I'm sure she wonders about traveling the world at the drop of a hat and not being tied down to any place in particular. We both reminisce about the easier days of when we worked together, would make money on a night shift at the restaurant, and would go blow it at the bar hanging out with everyone, and we have never really stopped chatting. I was invited to her wedding. Her husband knows we chat. My wife knows we chat. Story 7. When I was a sophomore... I made that exact pact with a woman who I was casually dating. She was a gorgeous, tall redhead with a tendency to be overdramatic. She was the first woman who I was ever obsessed with in my adult life. We actually wrote up the pact, signed it, and got someone in our dorm to act as our witness. Several years after graduation, I brought it up to her when we met for a drink, and she said she'd never speak to me if I ever mentioned it again. When I ran into her during a college reunion last year, I realized that I no longer had any feelings for her whatsoever which was a pleasant surprise. During the pandemic, I was going through some old papers and found the pact, 
Story 8. Not me, but my great-grandparents who adopted my grandpa. I didn't get to know them as much as I would like, but this is a cute story. Great-grandpa, Jay, and great-grandma, S, were sweethearts since kindergarten and dated all through high school. I don't remember exactly what happened, but she moved away. Rumor is that she worked as a chef in the White House. Before she left, they amicably split, as long-distance relationships in those days were pretty much impossible. They agreed that if they ever saw each other again, and they weren't already married, they would get back together. Well, time passes, and he marries his first wife, don't remember her name, who was a Serbian lady who had MS or some other terrible disease. He took care of her for many years before she passed. When he remembered her, he joked about how she watched so much TV as she was immobile that she knew all the names of the football players and kept track of all the big games, and he thought that was cutest thing. After she passed, one day he runs into S again, in the supermarket, and they talked, and he asked if she was married. And yes, she had married a veteran called G and was very happy. Some time passes, and G passed away as well. She found him in the phone book, and they reunited, both missing their lost loves, and fell in love with each other all over again. They got married not long after and adopted two kids and were happy until she eventually passed away. She always said that she would come back as a monarch butterfly. They kept a huge garden in the backyard and the butterflies would stop on their migration to Mexico. The next time the butterflies came through after she passed, one of them came to land on his hand and stayed for a few minutes before she flew off. And one of them does this every year that they return. I was very isolated from family growing up and estranged from their adopted son, my granddad, and I never thought they much cared about me until we found Jay again, and they had a picture of me on the mantel, and he'll never forget that. He still hadn't cleared out S's old thing, so we helped him until we moved away. And he gave me S's nearly 100-year-old violin, and I restrung it, and it has an absolutely gorgeous sound to it. Edit. Wow, my first award. I've never gotten one before. Thanks, kind stranger. Glad you enjoyed. Story 9. I did this with a friend when I was in my late teens, early 20s. We said we would get married at 30. She was boy. I was straight. I moved for university, and we saw each other less and less, and eventually drifted apart. I don't go back to my hometown very often, but the last I heard about eight or nine years ago, she had become a nurse, found a husband, and had a kid. I'm 36 now, and I don't feel like I've grown up one iota, and I haven't had a relationship that has lasted longer than three months. I try not to measure my life against the traditional metrics of marriage, money, and kids, but I sometimes feel like I have done things very wrong. Story 10. I turn 40 next year. She's a few years younger than me. We fooled around a ton years ago. She's now into anti-vax nonsense and proudly vegan. I have no problem with being vegan, but the conspiracy stuff and the anti-vax stuff is so baffling. Had she not suddenly turned that way, I wouldn't doubt we would give it another try. We loved each other and were best friends. Something just changed in her life where she just drifted into ideas and beliefs I cannot get behind or live with. It sucks and wish it never happened because I still have feelings for her. But I could never live with a partner believing that stuff. Had it been different, I'd be asking her to marry me in December. Story 11. I on and off dated a wonderful woman for a few years. Commitment was always kind of on-off, and we both dated other people during this time. Things were exacerbated by us both being single parents. Mine were quite a bit older than hers, even though she was older than me. We were always quite close. When we were dating, we'd talk about Oru, respective partners. No jealousy whatsoever. We ended up as FWB for a while. One night speaking on MSNIRC, we made a pact that if we both hit 40 and neither of us were married, then we would get hitched. TBH, for quite some time I thought we actually would get married. During one of our dryer spells, I was at her house fixing her washing machine and her sister popped in to say hi. Well, not only did she look amazing, but I could tell she was checking me out, but I left it at that. More talking online and I joke with her that I'm going to bed her sister and she jokes back that I should try if I want but that her sis is married and very happy. Turns out not as happy as everyone thought. Very abusive husband. Very long story short, I've been married to her sister for four years now. She did not take the news well to start off with, but that's mostly because I broke the news in such a way because I was drunk and thought it was funny. We all get along like a house on fire. Her parents, after the initial shock, have been wonderfully accepting, as has her whole family. I'm lucky to be a part of it. Story 12. I can only attest to the first part, but I still find it a funny story. A friend of mine about ten years ago, whilst in a group setting, said something along the lines of, We should get married if we're still both single when we're forty. No fifty, no sixty, no seventy. And we'd have to live in separate houses K, only thirty-nine years to go, I guess. Story thirteen. 
When I was about 17, I used to always hang with the girl down the road from my parents' house. One night, she told me she wants to marry me no matter what when she turns 40, even if she is already married. Over the next few years, we gradually to the sky out less as we got older. She passed away in a car accident when she was about 20 years old. Rip Sarah, story 14. My husband and I actually have a different pact. He grew up in a home where both his parents were married and never got a divorce. But he watched all four of his older siblings screw up in relationships and have unplanned children or multiple divorces or a wife who tried to run her husband over, etc. So he decided that he wanted to be married and never get a divorce. I grew up in a home where my parents were divorced and I would go every other week from my mom to my dad's and they lived about an hour away from each other. It brought me a lot of stress in my life, and I also decided that when I grew up, I wanted to find somebody who I would be with forever and never get divorced. My husband and I met in high school, and we decided we liked each other a lot. Two years into our relationship, we decided to get engaged. Three years after that, about two months before the wedding, we sat down and had an in-depth conversation about our relationship and what we expected of each other. And we decided then and there that if we ever decided that we wanted to get a divorce, it would be a knife fight. We would battle it out until one of us passed away, and then the other would be single. This was to prove two things. One, marriage starting raising a family is a serious thing. Two, little spats and arguments are silly reasons to leave someone. Learn to talk to each other and share each other's emotions and your relationship will be stronger. Obviously, there are legitimate reasons to leave somebody. Affair, abuse, crime, neglect, etc. These specific reasons are an exception to the pact we have. Story 15. When I was in college, there was a girl in my major classes that I really got along with, and we would study together, do class projects, and collaborate with each other whenever we could. She was just really cool to hang around with, and she was really hot too. She had a LDR with her BF back home, so it was just friends. I respected that even though a lot of the things he did were poor. Like he'd cheat on her, or when he'd visit her, He'd start some stupid fight with her and drive back home a day or two early. I just loved hanging out with her. We had a lot of shared interests and we continued to collaborate, sometimes helping each other with projects and classes only one of us were in. Then when we were seniors, she broke up with her loser BF. Only I had a serious GF at the time. We still worked on stuff together. During one late night caffeine-fueled project session, we were talking about the future and she says, if neither of us is married when we turn 30, we should just get married and live happily ever after. I agreed, and we went on speculating about what our lives would be like and so on. After we graduated, I moved across the country and she moved to SF. We tried staying in touch, but it was hard. It was the days of dial, so no Facebook, etc. So we lost touch for a long while. I went to a conference SF and thought it would be great to get in touch with her while I was there, but had no idea how to find her. About a week before I left, I got a call from her. She was working for the group that organized the conference and saw my name on the list and got my number from there. I flew out early and we met for dinner the weekend before the conference. We just picked up where we left off as friends. We'd both had a couple of poor relationships breakups, but were both unattached. She was just as hot as she was in school. Long story short, we hooked up. I stayed in my hotel just one or two nights. The rest was at her place. After I went home, we talked every night on the phone. Eventually, I quit my job and moved to SF to live with her. We got married when we were 35. Still going. Story 16. I made this pact with a girlfriend from high school, early 1990s, but much later in life. We dated, and in the ninth, me and tenth, her grade. We had a falling out for a bit due to my stupidity, but by the time she was graduating HS, we were pretty close again. We went in very different directions, but managed to stay in touch. She partied a lot and sort of drifted waitress, bartender type stuff. I was doing responsible cow, college, military reserve, starting a civilian career. We would connect every once in a while over the years, and there always seemed to be a little something special there, but for the distance. She called me out of the blue one year, early 2000s, and tells me I need to watch the NFL draft because her boyfriend or fiancé was likely to be drafted by a team in the state where she knew I live. If all went as expected, it would bring us closer, in distance, than we had been in a long time. By this time, I was on my first marriage or maybe living with whom would later become my first wife. He did get drafted, and they moved to the state just two hours away. I met and partied with him then for his birthday before his rookie season started. Good dude, big dude. She and I were strictly platonic. He ended up getting traded around the league, though, over the next couple of years, and they ended up living a couple states away. Meanwhile, I was certainly married by this time and had deployed to Iraq. Again, she contacts me out of the blue, 
maybe a MySpace message, while I was in Iraq after she happened to see me featured in an obscure trade magazine. After her and the NFL player broke up, she had taken an entry-level job in my civilian career field and happened to pick up the magazine for the first time ever that month. We started connecting again, remotely and still purely platonic. I came home from that deployment to a marriage in ruins. She cheated. I filed for divorce. While I'm adjusting to being home after more than 18 months and my impending marital status, I decide to fly out to visit my friend who welcomes me to stay with her a few days to help me mend. It was between Christmas and New Year and I was a bit fragile intellectually. During those couple of days, we connect even more and confide a lot in each other. But she has a few boyfriends. I met at least three and lots of drama at the time. Clearly, I have my own drama going on. I think that was when we made the deal, after knowing each other more than ten years. We knew we both loved each other, I'm convinced, but we both knew we needed to live and heal a little more before we set ourselves up for failure. I think the agreement at that time was that we would get married if neither of us were already by thirty. We talked about it regularly over the years, both assuring the other it wasn't a joke. Even her parents knew of the deal. She moved again. Her biological father drove out to help move her across the country to the state where we were originally from. On their way through my city, they stopped to visit. He stayed in a hotel. She stayed the night at my house. For the first time in what seemed like forever, we were both single, and it was clear how much we loved each other. The next day, she left, and for the next couple of years, we continued to live across the country from each other. We stayed in touch and saw each other occasionally. The agreement remained in effect, but we kept moving the age because we just weren't ready. Then two things happened. I met a girl and got notice that I would deploy again about the same time. The girl I met I really liked. She had her cow together and was beautiful. I wasn't trying to go overseas again attached to anyone. And at the time, she was really indecisive too. Meanwhile, I went out to visit the original girl. Then she came out to visit me. The new girl was still indecisive. Except when the new girl was in town. The original girl had been having trouble finding work in her home state, even after esthetician school. And she was in an abusive relationship that was really flipping her up. While she was visiting, we partied a lot. In fact, that's about all she wanted to do. I didn't mind much because I was leaving soon anyway. Among the many, many bad decisions we made was one where she agreed to house-sit for me and take care of my dog while I was deployed for a year. I gave her use of my truck, too. All she had to pay for was her food and gas. Sounds like the makings of a country song, right? Now I know what you all are thinking. But I had known this person for over 16 years. She wasn't a random. She needed help and so did I. All I wanted was for her to get a job and to help get her on her feet. I went into it with the proper intentions. It was a gift and I expected nothing in return. There were genuinely no expectations about a future for us beyond what already was. Besides, I was conflicted. She was the beautiful party girl with baggage I had known and loved forever. But the new girl was truly marriage material that I couldn't get a consistent read from. It didn't matter because I didn't have to decide for at least a year. A year made all the difference. The new girl and I talked every day I was gone. She was supportive throughout the deployment in so many ways. My old friend had a few boyfriends along the way, which was genuinely fine. But I came home to my house and vehicle not in great condition. Thankfully, the dog was alive. Most likely because the neighbors across the street came and stole him from my house. I took the new girl to meet my parents a month after I got home from deployment and asked her to marry me on that trip. We moved to another state for my civilian career and will have been married ten years next year. The original girl ended up staying in the town where she came to live with me and met another guy who she ended up marrying. I miss my old friend. I still love her and want the best for her. If she is living a better life today than she was eleven years ago, and I think she is, then it wasn't all for nothing. I'm just no longer a part of it. Edit, adding one more significant detail. I left this out originally because it is still a bit painful and pretty personal. But I've been inspired by all the positive vibes. About a week before I was set to leave, the original girl was acting really distant and texting a lot. I just wanted to have a really good time before I left. We went to a movie, same thing after the movie. Go to dinner, same thing during and after dinner. Same thing on the way home. This is a week before I'm leaving and I'm feeling like I made a bad decision. So I call her out on it and she's being evasive. We start fighting on the drive home, and I'm probably telling her what a cow human being she is that she can't even wait until I leave. She finally tells me she's been texting her mom the whole time, and of course I don't believe her. Next thing I know, her stepdad, who I've known as long as her, is calling my phone. I can't recall the entire conversation, but in a nutshell, he tells me that she's pregnant. She's been texting her mom trying to work out how to tell me the week before I leave. Holy cow, I bad person out.
I'm not even sure I want to be with her, but also not entirely sure I don't. I do love her, and again, she's not a total random. Is she even mom material? I'm not convinced she's wife material. Still freaking out. I've been so responsible about this my entire life, and a week before I'm going to deploy, I find this out. Is it even mine? And here she is, in a city where she doesn't know a soul, and I have to leave. Eventually, I calm down enough to have a conversation with her about it. Not sure if it was that night or the next day, but we quickly agree to terminate the pregnancy. The conditions were just horrible. Perhaps worst of all was that the soonest she could be seen was after I had left. She had to go through it all alone. My wife today and I have tried to get pregnant, and even with some very expensive treatment, we were unsuccessful. She has no knowledge of the original girl's pregnancy, and I have no legacy. Story 17. We have a joke packed, 35, I think, and also an elaborate, ridiculous story about being each other's second spouse because of natural causes, but also unnatural causes for some, like he marries his crazy-as-hell old flame, but I terminate her somehow because she's awful. And who has kids and yada yada. It's a whole ridiculous thing by now. We've been BFFs for 13 plus years. And it only gets more ridiculous as time goes on. My boyfriend of five years thinks it's hilarious. The three of us have been on a vacation together, planning an international trip for when COVID ends, etc. I'm so thankful they get along so well. Edit. There were other people on the vacation, and other people planning the international trip as well. You nasty.